Hi, and uh, today's video I'm going to be re uh, attempting to restore this clock. Something again that's just come through one of the online auctions. It's got a mechanism I'm not used to, so this is something new to me, and we'll see how we go. Quite an attractive clock. It's got the uh, visible escapement, which uh, I always tend to like. Quite a grimy dial, uh, as you can see. Actually looks like um, dried up old oil on there. But it's a pretty thing, a little ornate uh, brass decoration around the end makes it attractive as well. The case itself looks like it's in pretty poor condition. You've got um, what feels to be like pitting on the black slate. And also here there's a quite a big piece that's missing and I have to decide what I'm going to do with that. It's not as simple as uh, what I've done in the past where I've filled them in with marble black. This is a coloured marble so i really got to decide what I'm going to do with that at the end of the day. And as you can see, the pitting goes on around the sides as well as heavy bleaching, which these uh, slate clocks seem to suffer with. Around the back, we've got the mechanism cover or back door. Quite plain looking compared to the French clocks that I'm used to, where they've got or ornate cutouts for on them a bit cheap looking but uh, I'm actually gonna it is brass it's sprayed black and I quite fancy polishing that back up to uh, a shiny brass rather than spraying it black close up here of the back of the clock and the mechanism it's uh, got this little writing on here and Sony a clock. It says uh, patented June 14, 61, I believe. Uh, I imagine that's got to be 1861 because down here, oh, there's a, another patent there which says June 18, 1882. Uh, what should go on there would be the pendulum, not the type of pendulum I'm used to with the long bar um, and adjustable weight. So I think, but they, I think they call them a bob pendulum or bobbing pendulum, something like that anyway. I've got to find one of those and I'm not sure if they come in different weights or sizes, etc. to sort of, which may affect the the swinging backwards and forwards. So I've got to decide how I'm going to take out the mechanism with the old French clocks. It was a little bit more straightforward whereby you had the mechanism held into place by the front bezel and these two straps which screwed it into the back with the back plate compressing everything together. In this case we don't have that uh, luxury or that easiness. So what I can see is there are three screws on here. So um, I'm going to have a go. If I take off those screws, maybe the whole mechanism will come forward. Seems to undo fairly easily. I may need to support something in the back as I undo the last nut. 
So I'll just hold that while I do this. Oh yeah, I can feel it dropping already. There you go. Bezel off. Now what? If I undo this little screw here, this is quite a nice feature. Because normally on the French clocks, a little uh, metal pin that goes through to hold the hands in place. So that little screw version is quite nice. Now will it go backwards? Something doesn't feel quite right about the way that this is all fitted in for some reason. I don't know why. Especially as I'm seeing a lot of chipping out around here. That don't look too clever either. Solder on the inside of the face. I'm wondering whether this is the original dial for this clock so round the back again is it hard? yes uh, dear tea um, yeah go on eh? yeah. uh -huh. all right I'm sure my I'm sure my viewers will enjoy that. Yeah, no problem. Shut the door because it's cold in here. She does it every time I'm filming. I feel like she knows that I'm trying to record something. So she'll come in. Normally it's to come and offer me some form of food. But today we find out that the dog shitted in the garden and she needed some bit of paper to pick it up with. But I get a key. I get a key. I get a tea out of that deal. Anyway, back to the clock. I'm removing this screw here to take the back plate off. Let's see. Now, I don't feel that comes out of here. It's quite a large mechanism. Oh, I ain't used to this. Maybe it comes out from the front. That is awkward. I bet I know. I bet it comes out from the bottom. Right. So I'll undo the screws off of this. What you'll notice while I'm doing this video is all my clocks chime at different times. <laughs> I have got to set them all up properly I, I get so 
busy with giving them a service and then making them look nice and then the sort of little fine adjustments I never get round to but I will that was just turning it There's the chime. And there we are. It's quite a nice looking clock movement. Definitely dirty, it hasn't been service for quite a long time as I say that the grease running down here just telling me that it's been over oiled at one point the pallets on this escapement are metal ones as opposed to the ruby jeweled ones that I'm used to there is so much oil in there it looks like you can see that I, I just get the feeling someone's just emptied a can of three in one thinking they could get it working of course which I forgot to mention the clock isn't working at this point so I'm hoping a good service may um, sort all that out. Oh look, a bit of it works. I think this would be the chiming mechanism. See the arm there. Yeah, and there goes the actual hammer. So it has got heartbeat. Now we've got to get that heartbeat up to its official rate. One of the things which is sort of confusing me at the moment is that I'm more um, used to the type of clock where the the mainspring is enclosed into a barrel, whereas in this case it's not. And so letting these things down, I can't work out yet how you would do that. You all right? I'll leave it here. Ooh. <laughs> Don't record me. I've got a tea. I tend to be a bit lazy, and this electrician's screwdriver was just handy at the time, so which is why I was using that. There you go, when you use a proper screwdriver, how much better things come off. See the pendulum mechanism is coming off. Somehow. Make a real cock up of this one. It's got to be friction fitted. Can't work out how to take take this bit out completely.
It's like one of them Chinese puzzles. That's filthy. So I was always a kid uh, when he got his birthday presents and Christmas presents. The delight for me wasn't in playing with the things, it was taking them apart and finding out how they work. And then they just stay broken, a bit like my clocks. Now my clocks do work, it's just need calibrating. Right, uh, so I've gone and got myself a pair of gloves, odd gloves, just because I can't be bothered to find a matching pair. Um, this spring, it's not completely let down anyway. It's like there's a lot of tension in that still. I just don't know how they undo. I wanted to, the reason I got the gloves was so that I can see if I can slacken this side off. Work out where the ratchet is and how. I'm an idiot, I should just go and watch something. All right, I concede I'm not going to be able to work out how to do this without some form of instruction. So I'm going to head back off to my laptop and see if I can watch a video or two of how to dissemble these things before I do some real damage, both to the clock and possibly my fingers with those highly sprung mainsprings. Be back soon. So I've watched a few uh, YouTube videos and these springs are not as straight forward to take out um, as the ones that are in barrels. You've got to have this clip which holds the spring intact um, before you take off the back plate and then there's a whole process of unwinding the spring and it's something that, um, well, first of all, I don't have these spring clips and um, secondly, I think I need to watch a few more videos on how you do that. So I've ordered the spring clips and a few other little bits and pieces as well. There's a spring winder that comes, it's only cheap, like uh, the clips are about a tenner. A set of um, clips with a winder is uh, 17 quid, so not expensive. So I've ordered them, they should be here with me in the next few days. So I've put the clock back to the mechanism back together how it was. For now so that I can keep everything together. I think what I will do though is um, wash down the case and begin the restoration process on that. At least uh, by the time the clips come I could maybe have the case all finished ready to receive the uh, newly refurbished mechanism. But what I'll be using is uh, some hot water with some washing up liquid and uh, scotch, old scotch pad in fact, just to go over the clock and try and break down the years of grime. Oh, you can see it um, coming off already. Try not to wet it too much because the the water can uh, break down the plaster of parish, which, which is what they used to glue these clocks together. And now I mentioned about this chip here, which is uh, 
what I'll call a difficult repair, at least for me, because I'll never be able to match what's there. So, as I said again, it's different when you're just filling in a black area because black is black, I suppose, but this isn't going to be so simple. So one of my uh, thoughts is that if I can't really do anything with that as a repair, uh, best I can hide it. And the best way I can hide it is by removing this little panel and um, turning it around and gluing it that way so the chip isn't on the front at least. It's on the back of the clock where it's not going to be as noticeable as on the front. I know it's a bit of a cheap way but I really don't know any other way and it's not like you can go out and buy spares for these things. My way of doing this is uh, just find a, a place to put a big knife and gently tap it with the hammer. And because I'm such a clever clogs, um, I didn't realise what was that this thing is um, bevelled, which I, of course I knew it was bevelled, but I don't know if you can see it here. Well, let's go from the back end. It's bevelled differently on either side, so it's not going to work. And the other thing, of course, is where I am from going like that and the crack was there I wanted to have the crack that side even if I could and I actually could get away with the fact that the beveling is different but the back end as opposed to the front end hasn't got a bevel so it looks like I'm going to have to work out a way of as I say, building that up and go through my daughter's different nail varnishes and seeing if I can get something with all the colours they've got, see if I can get something good enough to blend into this so it doesn't look as bad as it does. So the first thing I'm going to do The first thing I'm going to do is stop beginning all my sentences with the word so. Something I've noticed uh, since I've been making YouTube videos. Um, right, so here we go again. Uh, using Millipot, and uh, those of you who have seen my channels will know that I've, this is what I use whenever I'm repairing a clock. It's just cutting off equal amounts of this stuff. And then just kneading it together until it's all mixed in fully. I'll do this for about five minutes and it becomes nice and soft and workable. Right, so that's ready to use now. And I'll just clean up the area which I want to glue the putty onto so that it gets... A nice joint and try to well first thing I always do with this is sort of rip off a little piece and just really press it into the grain so that's sort of almost like an undercoat layer well, there you go brilliant um, it becomes almost like an undercoat layer so I can press, when it's a tiny piece like that, I can really press it into the grain of what I'm working on. And then just start building up to the shape I want. Roughly, because I'm going to sand it down at the end anyway and shape it. I want to get as near to the shape as possible. 
to begin with. And there you go, an invisible repair. Only the very trained eye could actually tell which side has been repaired. Can you guess? So it's been overnight now, this is set and it's really hard. Um, there's a lot of it on there. Yeah, to make it easier to get it to shape, I'm gonna use my multi-tool. starting to take a bit of shape oh look who's here where are you going where are you going you come to help did you come and help do you want to help rub down the marble clock for me Yes, Daddy, I like helping you. Good girl, but you can't eat the clock afterwards. No, I will never eat the clock afterwards. Someone thinks I'm not normal. So that's as much as I want to do with the electric um, multi-tool. Now I'll start refining it by hand. Pretty happy with that. That's as good as I'm going to get it. And I'll just finish it off with a little bit of uh, water and wet or dry with finer grits. Smooth that off and uh, wait for my daughters to come home so I can have a rummage through their nail varnishes and see how well I can disguise this. It's, it's never going to be good. I think I'm lucky if it's going to be anywhere near good, but it's going to be better than being grey. I'm at a point where I'm becoming impatient. My daughters have got their nail varnishes at their work, which is that's what they do. So... Um, it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a wait and I could ask them a million times I still won't get what I want so rummaging around the house and I found this go creative crayons oh, yeah brilliant you know what when when I'm stuck in a corner I want to do something I'm sort of looking in every corner of the house for something that will do the job that I want to do. Now I had a little go at this with the crayons of all things and look at that. It's like you could hardly tell. And I know it's on the back bit so I'm going to show you how I did that. I got I found this colour which sort of looks similar to some of the colours that's on there and initially just sort of started colouring it in. Oh well, that looks better than what it is already. Worst case scenario, that'll kind of get me out of trouble. Because that is better than that. Then I thought, oh look, there's that brown one. I wonder if I can do a bit of something with this brown one as well. Which I started doing, just randomly adding tabs onto it. A bit more with this. A little wipe. to give it a polish and that's where I'm up to it 
it ain't terrible and with a little bit more work I reckon I could get that side to look pretty good I know it's not perfect, but anyone would have to admit that's pretty good. The underside came out better. I'll carry on working with that. 